<laughs> All right, my name is Gene Hu Chu. So, so just before Gene starts, I just want you to know that Gene and I go, go way back in, in the local uh, soccer organizations here. And my girls' travels teams have whooped on the Ukrainian okay. girls there many, many times. I'm sure, we've, as well, I'm so. sure we've lost every game. I'm sure we've lost every game. All right, yes, I uh, am a director of external relations with the Ukrainian American Sports Center, the Ukrainian National Soccer Club. But on my sort of political side, um, I'm with the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. I'm president of the Philadelphia chapter or branch of that organization. Uh, that is an umbrella organization. Among other things, we take care of advocacy. So we are the ones that approach congresspersons, senators, the White House, the Secretary of State's office, the Secretary of the Treasury to help Ukraine, to use the power of the United States to assist Ukraine. I am also directly, uh, indirectly involved with the Ukrainian American Relief Committee and also, incidentally, with the International Rotary. I was just on that Zoom <laughs> last Friday with your district governor, and I was the interpreter for the uh, for Mr. Bondarenko. Uh, so that is a legitimate program, and we're coming up with a great thing with uh, fire trucks and generators. Yep. So stand by for that. Uh, that's a wonderful program. Um, so it was difficult for me to figure out. And I, I don't know how do I run this, right? Just at the end of button. Yeah. Yeah. This one here. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about Ukraine. So what I figured I would do several things. First, introduce you a little bit to Ukraine, and to show you how it's a separate and distinct nation. Before I do that, I want to bring it down to something I read in the Lansdale Reporter and literally what explains to me and hopefully will explain to you exactly what's going on. Exactly what's going on. Ukraine is a very large country. It kind of looks and is the size of Texas. It is the largest exclusively European country in Europe. Russia is Eurasian. It's huge. It's, it's, it's bigger than France. And it's bigger than France and Belgium and a couple of other countries combined. The resources in that country are amazing. Agricultural is beyond imagination. Mineral resources, anthracite coal in the Donbass region, steel mills, ports, uh, 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 economic trade, uh, defense necessary minerals, um, tremendously educated people. Right? Universities there are marvelous smart people, technically savvy, very clever in their military strategy, very smart. The people that you want working for you, resources that you want to own, right? Now, what happened in Ukraine, and we'll get to the revolution of dignity, is it completely did an about face on Putin, it wanted to go completely west. So Putin lost control in 2014 over Ukraine. And why is that a big deal to him? Because with Ukraine, take my word for it, he becomes the Soviet empire. He becomes our nuclear enemy. He will be every bit as, mag as, as huge and scary as Russia, the Soviet Union, ever was to us. And how much, how much did it take for us to dismantle and bring down that enemy? Over the course of how many decades? Okay, so that's because all those resources are what make him big. Without Ukraine, he's like a big, 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 uh, big country with a gasoline station. Right? Ukraine is dangerous to him. He fears Ukraine, and that expresses itself in something I'm going to tell you, which is genocidal. Right? He fears Ukraine because it is entirely confessional, religiously tolerant. <clears throat> the president is Jewish. The Crimean Peninsula is filled with Muslim Tatars who were once cleansed completely off the island into Siberia by Stalin. All 250,000 Ukraine invited them back. They're tremendous Ukrainian patriots and they're Muslim. There's a Jewish president. There is a, 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 an international or a national group of churches that works together. It is, it is tolerant of all sorts of lifestyles. Freedom of press, freedom of expression, all of these democratic things, because if Ukraine is successful since the independence of 1991, it will infect the Russian people. All right? Just like Germany and Japan, how quickly in one generation we turned them to democracy and they are now our friends. They were once as ugly as the Russians, right? 
but how quickly. And he knows that. And Ukraine is the key to turning Russia. So all of these things make our interest common to preserving a free and democratic Ukraine. And at this point also, getting around, getting to win this war and restoring the resources to restore her. Although I have an idea for that. They've seized all of those assets of the oligarchs. They've frozen them, take them into a fund, and we'll build back with their damn money. Okay? <laughs> so we don't just freeze, but seize. <clears throat> we need to get our senators and congresspersons to do that now. Okay? And this is the view. This is Ujura. This is where the uh, uh, aid will be coming in for you and will be transported all the way to Kharkiv, Luhansk, not uh, uh, Mariupol, Melitopol, um, uh, Nikolai, uh, Donetsk, not Donetsk, but where is, uh, for some reason, oh, Mariupol is right here. How are they getting anything into Mariupol? Um, they're not getting it right now, it's being prevented from getting it. Right. Now, they're probably, they're by right small vehicles. Cross or, or being, yeah, being pro probably, at best, they're being snuck in by small vehicles. All right, that's people that are taking their lives into their own hands. You're probably getting like little, so SUVs that slip something in there and there. But the situation, this, 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 and actually, uh, Mariupol was in the in the press today, in, in the Lansdale report. So the mayor just told us that he estimates that over 10,000 10, civilians are dead. Okay. Yeah. Civilians. That's at least 10,000 women, children. Uh, they've got them all stored in the freezers of old shopping centers. Okay, so, and, and, and they're bringing in crematoria, portable crematoriums to burn their bodies to hide what they've been doing. Anybody starting to see the picture here? Okay, somebody else, that happened to another nation, and actually a lot of Ukrainians during World War II. Yeah. Yeah. The government service just published their intentions towards Ukraine. Okay, now listen very closely. He's denazifying Ukraine. He's got to get rid of the Nazis. And this Mein Kampf-like journal and guidebook to how to denazify is showing us what you need to do. You have to identify the Nazis first, right? The Nazis equals identifying yourself as Ukrainian. They've expressly put that into a publication that reads like Mein Kampf. If you are not ethnically Ukrainian, but you behave like a Ukrainian, so if you're Russian ethnically, or you're a Tatar and you behave Ukrainian, or you have a Ukrainian flag, or you're fighting the Ukrainian forces, and heaven forbid, if you have somebody fighting the Ukrainian forces, they're after your family. They've got a list. So Bucha included a list of people teachers, uh, family members of people that are fighting in the Ukrainian armed forces. It included athletes. Ukrainian nationals existed to preserve Ukrainian sport from the Soviets. It may have to do that again. Because athletes are on the list to get killed because they represent Ukrainian national identity. That publication now, as interpreted further by Timothy Snyder and other historians today, establishes that this is a genocidal effort to wipe out all Ukrainians. And that's why they will bomb indiscriminately, and when they march into a city, will empty their machine guns of their tanks. As they say in Ukrainian, Ben wherever that bullet might land. Okay? That's genocide, folks, and they've admitted it. Okay? And my thanks to all of you for help. Because keeping the people strong, giving them this generator so they can have electricity. They got no electricity in Mariupol. They got no water. They got no heat. This is siege mentality like they used to do in the medieval times. Starve people to death. Starve people to death. Deny them water. You blow up hospitals. Why? So that the injured can't be treated. They actually did that in the Maidan during the Revolution of Dignity. They denied access to hospitals to the wounded, so they had to be treated with these tourniquets <clears throat> out in the open. Disease sets in. It's the same thing as medieval, you know, and you can almost see those missiles being launched like the big boulders on the caterpillars, just indiscriminately to starve people out and let them die. And folks, don't, don't be fooled. This is genocidal. This guy is going to go after 
one, over 1,000 guided missiles hitting civilian targets in Ukraine. Uh, yeah, guided the, missiles. The movement of the, the movement of the citizens through the filtration camps. That's for it. Russia, yes. Russia flying yes. Ukrainians by just taking them over and and you have no choice. You're on the bus. We're taking you over. You're, right. you're, you'll never see home again. Might as well set a new life up here in Russia. Right. So yeah, if you're if you're lucky, uh, right, you're you're getting. That's basically what they used to do to Ukrainians. Now, what's what if you spoke to a Ukrainian person? And I, I was born in Philadelphia. My parents came over in World War II as refugees. Very similar to what's going on now. World War II was a wipeout. And the whole dance of World War II was on Ukraine. Yeah. The Nazis wiped it out. It's, the, the, the communists wiped it out. It was a complete war. And, and, and coming from Western Ukraine, uh, to give you an example of how it works with the Russians, my grandfather was on the list. Because, quick note, I'm an Eastern Catholic, not a Roman Catholic. Yeah. So my grandfather was a Catholic priest. All Catholic priests, bishops, archbishops were slaughtered if they were captured. Similar to the list that you have today. And the Greek Catholic Church, as well as the real Ukrainian Orthodox Church, will be slaughtered. The Muslim Church will be eradicated. The Ukrainian Baptist Church will be eradicated. Only the Russian Orthodox Church will exist. Practical reason for genocide is you wipe them out and repopulate with Russians, and you turn it into a Russian state that way. No problem. Hitler had a hunger plot, a starvation plan, identical. Wipe out Ukraine and we populated with German farmers. Okay, that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. So that's why we need to use the strength of the United States and of Western Europe and the entire civilized world to protect Ukraine because that's what's waiting next for the Baltic peoples and for the Poles. It's not going to stop here if it doesn't, it doesn't stop. So now, just to give you the psychological, this is messianic. All right, so what the people are being told is the following. The propaganda that they see on their television and have been seeing it for 20 years. <coughs> 20 years. It took Hitler seven to eight years to turn that population into a frenzied patrol of killers, right? He's had the Russian people for 20 years. They have no compunction about killing Ukrainians and denazifying. Nazi equals Ukrainian, or somebody who looks or behaves like a Ukrainian. So one day, I'm, I guess I'm a Nazi. You're probably a Nazi too. Right? Yeah, I am. <laughs> you, look at you, look, you look like a Nazi. You better not take it out. <laughs> so this is, this is Ukraine. I don't know how far you want me to go, but I'll show you a little bit. You know, some people say it's not a separate and distinct country. So somebody asked me, the Trizu dates back to the ninth century under uh, Grand Prince Olet Ihor, and eventually Volodymyr, Yaroslav the Wise. This is the Viking Falcon Crest that existed since the ninth century and today was adopted into the national emblem, the coat of arms of Ukraine. This is from the Poltava region of Ukraine. Every region of Ukraine is beautiful, sort of its own soulful dress. Poltava is like considered the heartland. It's like Kansas, right? This is like mother Ukraine. It's right in Poltava, in the, in the eastern, east central part of Ukraine. My people come from the Carpathian Mountains. We look a little bit different. So Ukraine is very, very diverse. It's very, very diverse in its ethnicity, in its dress and style. Um, this is the very beginning of the first organized Ukrainian state, 980 to 1054. It's Kievan Rus. Got nothing to do with Russia, which is Rotsiya. And the word Russia was adopted by Peter the Great and Catherine the Not So Great. Okay. <laughs> Actually, Peter did not so great. They said they took, they stole Ukraine's history, and said from today on we're Russians. We're the people of Rus. Never were, because these were the grand princes. Sviatoslav actually owned all. We almost we almost reached Italy in expanding the empire. This is the great baptizer of Ukraine, Volodymyr the Great. <clears throat> he brought Christianity to Ukraine. He's considered a saint, equal to the apostles and all of the Christian. Uh, churches. This is Yaroslav the Wise, the grandson of Volodymyr. This guy was very interesting because he actually was one of the first people at that time, look how far back that is, who wrote a book called Ruska Pravda, which defined the rights of citizens. Back then the citizens had no rights anywhere, but in Ukraine he actually created rights for citizens 
and, and very, so that's why Ukraine has always been sort of freedom love mm -hmm. and different, even throughout European history. He married off his daughters throughout Europe. This is uh, uh, Anna Yaroslavna, she was the queen of France. She ruled France when the king, when the, she married the king of France. Uh, meanwhile, in Moscow, that's what it looked like back then. <laughs> Didn't exist till the 15th century, folks. Began with a great guy called Ivan the Grozny. Ivan the Terrible. Been that way ever since. Been that way ever since. And you know what? I used to be in kind of a bad Putin, good Russia. It's been Ivan Grozny since the very beginning. <laughs> And uh, this, these are the churches in Ukraine in the 10th century, the 11th century. This is what Moscow looks like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get about now. Let's get into a practical thing. Um, you see, Ukraine is winning, and you know they're wrong, Putin's mad about that. And, and now the war has moved towards towards the eastern part of Ukraine, probably trying to get at least the two provinces. Um, and I, I fear that the slaughter here is gonna be unbelievable. And I was focused on concentrating on the Donbas, on Kherson, which is the area right above Crimean Peninsula, so we can have the land bridge. That'll be his first step. That's gonna be like North Korea, if he gets his way. If he gets his way. These countries have imposed sanctions, and still he behaves the way he behaves. Not working. Eight years ago, these sanctions needed to be brought in. Look at what they did after the Crimean Peninsula and Donbass was attacked. Nothing. America, Western Europe did absolutely nothing. And when you show Putin weakness, it's like a shark. It's like a drop of blood in the ocean. It's going right at it. It's going right at it. After the attack on Ukraine, removal from SWIFT, they're still targeting banks. Why don't we take all of them out? Mm -hmm. what, what, what bank has the right to exist in Russia and handle money on behalf of that guy? Nord Stream 2, we allowed that to occur. It was another sign of weakness. Happily, that was taken away. So there's been a lot of sanctions, acid freezes, and so on. After Bucha, we cranked it up a little bit more. So a lot of additional banks, Putin's two daughters, now we're talking about taking out Lavrov's daughter in New York for eight years. Yeah. And she's still sitting there. Finally, they got her sanctioned. Let's get all those students out, get all those visas done. I'll get to that in a second. So we have a little bit more. All right, so what else is needed? And I'll try to get through this very quickly because I want to take up all of your time. So this is where you guys, because us Nazis, I'm calling Congressman, am I in Madeline Dean's district here? I don't know how far out I got. Yeah, yes, you are. Right. You're on the right corner here. Right. We've met with her very often. <laughs> We've met with her very often. And if you're from Bucks County, Congressman Fitzpatrick is on the Congressional Ukraine Caucus. Uh, our two senators are right on with Ukraine, very much part of the thing. So call them and say, hey, don't target individuals, get all of the oligarchs. All right? Uh, don't target some banks, get all of the banks. Right? Uh, sanction all, stop targeting, uh, uh, you know, just to stop all trade, stop all exports. This is nothing. This is a big one. They're still selling oil and gas. Right. Yes. Yeah. America has said no, but we need to use our diplomatic effort to get everybody to stop. There's billions of dollars being spent on these missiles that are blowing up Ukrainians. Right. So stop the oil and gas. This is huge. So whatever you can do to call and, and make that work, remove you know, call. So, you know, of course, you know, with, with the oil situation there, you know, it's 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 which evil do you want, right? Do you want Iran? Do you want Saudi Arabia? Do you want Venezuela? Or do you want Russia? Is there a winner in that crowd? Yeah. Not at all. But there are about there are Texas. Are, <laughs> about Texas and, and the Canadian yeah. shale shale yeah, sands. Right, right. They're like, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head, and that is in the West. If we all became economic, or uh, if we became energy self-sufficient, which we were. Right. Which we were, and we lost that. So we need to produce all of those resources ourselves. And we can get that done. So can Canada. Okay, for me, I don't, you know, it's a big deal for a lot of Democrats who are against pipelines. Well, come on, stop. Look what happens in a world when you, when you, when the wrong people are selling the oil, when the wrong people are selling the oil. Yeah. Let's get our oil to market. Let's stop. Let's, let's be more practical about stuff. Let's put an economic zone. Uh, you know, this is a great bill. And yet. 
Never yield European territory. Really easy to remember. It's the word, the Russian word for no. It's the Nyet bill. That thing has all of this in it. Well, Congressman Fitzpatrick in Bucks County is all on board for this, and he and his colleagues are pushing it. So one of the things to say, I would ask you to pass the Nyet bill. To know exactly what you're talking about. Exactly what you're talking about, because it includes all of this. Let's assess the bum as a war criminal and Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. That will introduce automatic sanctions of this nature. So, so Congresswoman uh, Dean, that, that guy needs to be a war criminal. And that country needs to be a state sponsor of terrorism. So, military aid, no fly zone ain't gonna happen in the States, but we can do a humanitarian, but that's the UN. But it can create these no fly zones and, and zones through which some, um, uh, some aid can go through. Come on, man, Listen, why can't we get those MiGs and old warthogs over to Ukraine? They say they could use them. So that's something else you could say to the Congress. <laughs> really? Oh, because they're well, offensive. The challenge is they're not, you know, they're, they're, the Ukrainians are not trained on American uh, hardware. Oh. And so this is why it's key well, that, 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 that Poland yeah. and, and, and Slovakia and Germany are able to, to pass over their right. Russian hardware right. and replace it with American hardware because right. we can't ship American hardware to Ukraine where their soldiers are not trained on it. It's yeah. just a waste of, of but, everything. The, the mix can, but the warthogs themselves, they've been trained on. Uh, in Yavori. They actually can fly the warthogs. They've been trained on that in, uh, in Yavori, in western Ukraine, where the American soldiers have been training them. So share the military intelligence. The, uh, there's, there's various missile systems, missile defense systems that can be done. Jam Putin's radar. Work. Javelins, they blow up tanks. Switchback dro drones, they are like basic artillery that can blow up whatever you want. Um, and stingers, and other harpoons. You gotta get those boats that are bombing Mariupol. They're all in the Black Sea there, okay? So that's the, that's the harpoons. And uh, we gotta start sending tanks and heavier artillery. Uh, and now I'm coming to an end, and I have questions, you can ask questions. Economic aid, that's been done. I mean, that's, the U.S. has been fantastic on that level, but you can only, always ask for more. Get, get Russia out of the U.N. It has a very thin line of being the successor to the Soviet okay. Union. So we can get them out of there. The prosecutions for war crimes need to start. And uh, that's what you guys are doing. The humanitarian assistance. Clever ways to do it, smart ways to do it. You know, using the money, using the, I mean, the, 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 the time a person's tourniquet, that's, that's huge. That's huge. Somebody, a soldier, especially out in the field or you know, somebody that's been hit by a bomb. So continue to work with organizations such as that. This is the organization I'm close to. You've been working for the United Ukrainian American Relief Committee. We've got the Rotary. I'm gonna add it to the list. There's a little spot for them. There's others. Um, no, that's me, that Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. That's my organization. You can get on ucca.org and get a lot of information on what's going on in Ukraine. And they also have an aid, humanitarian so, aid. So Jane, like, like Rebecca, please, and yeah. tomorrow when you're back in your office, uh, please summarize the contact points and whatnot, and, and send, send them to me, yep. so that we can we, so we can get this information out to everybody here. Not, not what what taking notes tonight. And I want to add international rotary. Where, where's that spot? It was empty, okay? Because I've gotten to know you guys, uh, and uh, it's actually when Ukraine became independent, I was involved in getting you, you know, computers to Ukraine. So we worked with you guys on that. Very marvelous people, and some of the Rotarians in Poland and Ukraine are tremendous too. That's all I got. And that was here by accident. I just, just want to ask, yes. it seems like the tolls are doing a tremendous job yes. to support the family. Yeah. Uh, I've heard about people driving from Warsaw down to the border to help people bring them back and put them in their houses. It's pretty, pretty amazing that we had to carry another toll. And, and something that people don't read about a lot, uh, and this actually is uh, universal, and that is there are a lot of folks that have picked up arms and they're fighting. Yeah. Wow. Battalions. <laughs> there are a lot of volunteers from the United States, that, you know, uh, people that uh, uh, sometimes even, I, I know one person who is at one of our parishes here, uh, he just picked up his guns and stuff and got himself the right kind of gear and he's over there fighting. Yeah. Um, $500 a month. Yeah. He's with the pain the foreign leader. <laughs> so yeah, and there are a lot of a lot of polls. They're not doing it for the money. Yeah, because they they see they see the future. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other any other questions? How, how many refugees is Poland taking in so far? A million, a couple million. Yeah, it's, a it's pushing. Yeah, I'm going to guess at least a million and a half. Okay, okay. No, Poland. That's huge. Yeah, just Poland. Yeah.
Yeah. yeah. I know that, I believe the total count is, because uh, you've got, well, we go back to the frame here, I know we can do that this way. I don't know, let's do that up. Anyway, you saw all of them, but there's some, there's some in all of them, but Poland is a, is a principal. This thing go down? Is it okay, well, just grab down. the thing over on the right and slide it up to the top. No, this thing. Oh, no, I don't know. Uh, no, that's not a lot. I don't know. What are you trying to do? Just go to the first slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The very first slide, we'll finish that so you can see you paint. All right, see, so that's what Poland is. And it's the easiest place to get to because you go through the view, which is a, uh, it's a gorgeous city. If you ever get a chance to travel over there, I mean, the architecture is amazing. It's a combination of Parisian and Austrian. Uh, Kiev is a beautiful city. The most beautiful part of Ukraine are the Carpathian Mountains. And there's a lot of people in Ukraine. A lot is coming through Slovakia. And Moldova is the poorest country in Europe, and it's taken in an incredible number of refugees and the guy who's the secretary of state actually used to be a part of the organization i work for and he basically just said everyone open your homes all mm. the buildings are open and so people just went out in the streets and mm. took people in because this guy just, wow that's really great just you, said this yeah. is this is what and they're and they're it's the poorest country in europe and they've just open their arms and they don't you don't hear those stories yeah. Yeah, well, 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 those are very very warm-hearted people um yeah now, having said that, that's right. False yeah, yeah. So, so if if, if Ukraine falls, Moldova's gone. Yeah. it's not part of the UN. And I'm going to talk, talk about involvement of America in an interesting way in a second. Belarus. While we're watching Ukraine, they took Belarus. Belarus is now Soviet. Mm -hmm. okay. And even the Belarusians here will tell you it's gone. Yeah. So now you've got that entire border, and then you're going to go up into the Baltic countries. Question, right? We can't upset Putin. Uh, in our defense of Ukraine, because he has a because it's a nuclear uh, country. So let's talk about that. So we don't care what happens to forty-four some odd million people, because we might start World War Three. We might start World War Three. But all of God, let's stop talking about what we're not going to do. They, the intelligence comes out that, that they're going to use chemist, and there's some evidence that they have used their first chemical weapons in the Azov area. Yes. Right All right. So that so keep an eye on that. But so they say, and that, they say they, the, America says they might use chemical weapons. Beware! That very day, President Biden says we're not sending any boots to the ground. Why say that? Why not have that as a possibility? I mean, but, and what was, but then, so how far will, can we do the extra push to help Ukraine? So if we don't care about. 44 million Ukrainians. And we signed this thing called the Budapest Memorandum where we provided Ukraine with security guarantees so that Ukraine unloaded the third largest nuclear arsenal in the history of the world. In exchange for these guarantees. In exchange for these guarantees. And we said, ah, we interpret it like lawyers. That didn't mean boots on the ground. That kind of meant we would help you. Well, guess what? NATO that Article 5 doesn't say a whole heck of a lot more than that. My question to you, Ukraine falls. He goes after the 1.5 million Latvians and the 1.5 million Estonians. If 45 were part of NATO, and then we have about- Because he, he knows to step around the way he could we'll kick his ass. <laughs> God bless you, but I'll still ask the question. And if we add the two or three million Lithuanians, or as they say up north, li Lithuanians, are we going to care about them? Or are we going to say, no, we just can't start World War III over a bunch of balls? Yeah. 19, 1939 all over.